Praise God. Praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Praise God. Praise God. Well, um, this is what I actually told you guys the other night. I told you that I had a, a video that I was going to do. I've been doing a lot of research on witches and warlocks. Okay, and let me tell you why. You can see the title. This world is run by them. You can say what you want. I really don't even care. There's two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. What's one you repping? End the story. Quit playing games. So many people are straddling the fence. And I don't know if y'all realize, but time is short. No, we don't know. Not even Jesus Christ knows, but only God knows the day and the hour when he comes back. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But you got the church playing. You got people playing. And the crazy part is that this is run by witchcraft. Let me tell you why. Wizards, sorcerers, it does not matter. Because just like, and I'm going to explain this thing, and I'm going straight in, as you can see, because I'm prayed up, I'm ready to go. Um, Just like God, God downloads everything to us. Okay, I'm a prophet, right? Apostle, prophet. What that means for some people, because they'd be like, oh, you can't have two titles. That's not apostolic anointing. Okay, you understand what that means? And everybody have different mandates. So mine is mostly prophetic. All right. So what I do, I'm a preacher, a teacher, not necessarily a common preacher. So I'm not in a pastoral thing. I'm more of revelation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is going to download some things. God is going to tell me some things. God's going to show me some things. A lot of people don't see what I see. Point blank in the story. And I always tell people, you ain't got to believe me. Go to God. Ask them for confirmation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let's go here. A lot of people are being controlled by witchcraft. Through the food, through the water. I'm oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let's be real. And I have to tell you something that God told me um years ago. And and I've been disobedient. I'm not even gonna lie in front, but I'm learning to cook at home. I'm learning to make my own food. He said, Deanna, stop eating out. Because I used to get sick all the time. Because what? People are preparing things with their hands. Remember, I don't care if you got gloves on or anything. When you're dealing with witchcraft or any type of magic, do you need to touch anything? Y'all don't, don't hear me. It could be just the person demeanor. Because everything is spiritual. I don't know why. And, and I do know the devil has tricked people into thinking that we're just living in a world. Honey, everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual on good terms or bad terms. Either God or the devil. Point blank end of story. So... I'm going to try to take my time because I feel the Holy Ghost on me so heavy right now. Hallelujah to his name. But I want to talk to you first about manipulation. I want to talk to you first about Christian witchcraft. I want to talk to you first about lying. I want to talk to you first about um, jealousy. All these spirits that's in the church. All these spirits that's working in our lives. When I say our lives, either somebody you know that are in bondage. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Manipulation, that is the main thing that's running the church. What is manipulation? I'm going to make you do it one way or another. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to get everybody against you, and it's called ostracize, or I'm going to embarrass you. That's manipulation, which is Christian witchcraft. Oh, come on, somebody in the home. Jezebel spirit. Jezebel spirit is also in the church. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So what is the Jezebel spirit? What is the nature order of God? The natural order of God, excuse me. God, man, woman. Let me tell you something. One thing I've never done. I know that I'm called. And by the way, y'all so funny. Y'all keep talking about uh, there are no apostles. Let me tell you something. Let me go ahead and, and hopefully just crush that thing for once and all. I fought it too. Trust me, I did. And then God showed me. He had to really show me too. Here's the deal. There was one apostle named Junea. Now what does Junea sound like? Does that sound like a guy name or a girl name? All right, so let's talk biblical application. Scholars are half and half. Some say it was a man, some say it was a woman. My spirit and God tells me that it's a woman. Okay, all right, so stop doing all that. You're not an apostle thing. I'm not hearing you. I'm going to be one to the day I'm dying. Ain't nobody can stop it, not even I. Okay, all right, we got that. Okay, so let me continue. Everything is happening now, and it's happening, it's happening, it's moving fast. And I'm not kidding. I hear God say, Deanna, they're playing. Let me tell you something. The enemy has came into the church and has taken over. Now we're living in a world where everybody want to get branded. Y'all don't see what's happening? First, they took us out of the robes. Oh, this, this, I'm going deep. So go ahead, tag and share this. They took us out the robes. Oh, I'm, I'm going to try to go, go slow because you know when the spirit on you talk fast, so I'm going to try to slow it down. They took us out the robes. And what did they do? They put us in suits. So now we started doing business per se 
kingdom spirituality. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Because whatever you start doing, assimilation, association brings assimilation. So you start acting the part. So now it became a business. Now, what is it? People are doing it for foot to lucre. It's a business. You don't hear what I'm saying? So now everybody's trying to get branded. You have everybody, um, this is my ministry. This is my ministry. Can I tell you something? We ain't got no ministry. It's Jesus Christ that has a ministry. And what we're supposed to do is put people to Jesus Christ, point them to Jesus Christ. All we're supposed to be doing is servants. I'm telling you what, thus said the Lord, no one has a ministry. And I was even wrong for that. That's why I took it out of there. Now, I still have my website because that's what I built upon. But I remember when God told me about four months ago, he said, guess what? Even you're wrong. There is no Apostle Deanna Dixon Ministries. He said, there's only one Jesus Christ Ministries. Come on, somebody. How, can, how dare you build upon another man's foundation? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But, but, but walk with me. So everybody has all these ministries, not on Facebook. Oh, and then hold on, the greatest one, PayPal. I mean, now I'm a PayPal. You're all right. Come on, somebody. I'm gonna hit you with some truth. You lying preacher. Stop it. Hallelujah. Before God get you. God gonna get you, Judas. God gonna get you. Hallelujah. You don't hear what I'm saying. Judas never got to spend that money, by the way. Hallelujah. So now you have witch Christian witchcraft in the church because now people are manipulating to get filthy lucre. But and now hold on, as you listen to them. Case in point, there was this guy, there's this guy, actually we're friends, and this is this is a real situation, and I was listening to his music. Now, it's not bad or anything, but you know what? I, I had to even delete the little clip, and all it was is talking about a love song, because it kept ringing in my ear. I said, God, what is this? And remember spirits, Deanna, and because he's a nice person, his spirit is still tainted. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You're listening to things that are tainting you, so now we have a church that is tainted. You don't hear what I'm saying. Now. There are thousands of warlocks because remember the order of God, God, man, thousands, but there's only 16 types of witches. So you have more warlocks, which are more dangerous. Oh, come on somebody. And can I tell you something? Most of them are running churches today. I couldn't understand it. And, and let me do a disclaimer. I've always loved church my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Even when I wasn't right, I think some people understand because it's been a tradition, especially from our father, our grandfather, our grandmothers, our big mama. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But when you really become or have a relationship with God, things change because now you see that I have to apply. Oh, come on, somebody. I can't just read that, Bible. It's called biblical applications. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I'm going somewhere with this. So when 2015 came and God said, I'm calling you out the church, I really, I said, God. I've been to church all my life, God, you know, I said, you know, tradition. So I said, I'm calling you out so I can show you something. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. So I want y'all to know I'm just not attacking. I know what I see. I know what I've seen. And even when I was in the churches, all that since 27 years old, which has been 24 years, can I tell y'all something? I saw nothing but wrong. And I, just to be, I, I, I got to go here. Most places didn't like me. And it hurt because I, they knew I see. Oh, I saw. I didn't want to see. There were times I tried to turn my face and God said, no, I want you to watch it. And I would literally go home and cry. say, God, I see it. And if sometimes God would make me go to that man or that woman of God, you'd be surprised how even in the middle, I, I, I'm going to, and I'm going somewhere with this. This is all going to tie in what I'm saying. God used to make me go in churches, especially in Sacramento. Oh, people believe me. Oh, they remember me. They know me. Hallelujah. Oh, they remember. And I remember this one guy, God said, I want you to go sit in service and I'll tell you what to do. And, and I'm telling you, I'm not going to say those times felt comfortable. And, and they still don't when God tells you to do that because I already knew what time it was. So at a point in front of everybody, I had to stand up and I did it. See, that's what two prophets do. We don't just go around talking about, you're going to get a house. You're going to get a car. No, we go into churches. We go into on assignments that are very hard. Hallelujah. And you can only do by the spirit of God. Cause trust me, it feels weird. And I'm sitting up there and yeah, my flesh was scared. I have to be honest with you, but my spirit is strong because remember it's the spirit of God that's inside of you. So I stood up and I said, God said, close this church that it is not of God. And I said, back down, I said, everything what does said the Lord. And I remember that man took that microphone. How dare you come into my church? Who are you? I am the prophet of this house. And I said that. And God said, shut your mouth. Don't say nothing. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all ain't ready for no real prophet. Because a real prophet have to sit there and be humble. Even though they are getting blasted in front of everybody. Which have happened maybe four or five times in my life. I was so embarrassed. And God said, sit there and say nothing. Because I'm on a mission. You are in my mission. So you can't say nothing. Because then you'll be in the flesh and they won't believe you for real. 
And I mean, he embarrassed me, and I just sat there, and I wanted to run out. I ain't going to lie. I wanted to run. And God said, sit there until the end. Even after he finished doing what he's doing, I just wanted to walk out. God said, no, you must stay. That's the completion of the prophecy. You must stay to the end because they have to know that you are not moved. But even though your flesh is like so embarrassed and people looking at you, you don't hear what I'm saying. Two months later, that church was closed. And we saw each other at the stoplight. And he apologized. He said, you know, woman of God, you were right. And that's not to glorify myself. I'm trying to tell you something. Prophets, God is calling you out on a journey. And you're going to have to be strong. And the only way you can do this is by God. A lot of you pastors, preachers, teachers, y'all trying to do it through man, through this, through education. Can I tell y'all something? I went to Bible college, so don't even run front with me. Can I tell you something? The stuff I truly learned was from God himself. He said, I'll keep you. I'll show you. Don't be scared of their faces. I'll tell you. I'll be with you, even through the midst of it all. You ain't got no real prophets too much these days because they are liar before God. Hallelujah. Because the stuff that God God really ask you to do will make people hate you. You don't hear what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Even family. Because for some reason, they feel like they are immune to the say of the Lord. I just said something. Okay, let me continue. So now witchcraft has entered. And now God is taking the prophets out. So he's shaping them and he's molding them. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. He's molding them in this hour himself. That's why I stopped doing prophetic classes. He said, okay, the ones that he chose, come on somebody. And, and hold on. Those the ones that said yes and there was ones that still today I haven't even heard of them. Oh, yeah. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying because everybody can't walk this walk. Many are called and few is chosen. Many are called saying, I can do it, but then they get scared. But the few say, God, I'll do it. I don't care if they ridicule me. I don't care if they mock me. I don't care if they kill me. I'll go where you want me to go, and I'll say what you want me to say, and I'll do what you want me to do. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Keep on. I'm going on this journey. So God is calling the true ones out, which is the remnant, because he's preparing you himself, thus said the Lord, hallelujah. So I'm sorry, ain't no prophetic college is going to save you. Ain't nobody really going to save you if you are called as an apostle and a prophet in this hour because God needs you. So he's calling you to himself, and therefore you have to get it together. You ain't got time to be nobody friends because some of you are looking for love in all the wrong places. Let me tell you something, being a prophet, honey, you got to be delivered from people. I don't know who that was for because that is totally off the subject. So somebody on here was pulling on my spirit. You got to be delivered from people. There's going to be time where you're going to cry. And I'm going here today. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. When you're going to wish you was dead. And God said, not yet. Y'all ain't ready for me. All right. Now I'm going to get him to my subject. All right, so let's talk about what a warlock is. That was for somebody. Somebody was pulling on me very hard. You are a prophet. That was your confirmation, thus said the Lord. Okay, so... Let's go to the witches and warlocks. And yes, you heard me right. Um, they run the government. They run the world. They run the job market. Um, they run law enforcement. They run everything. And everything is, is, is begins with the blood and sealed with the blood. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all wonder why people are missing? The more power that they are summoning from the devil, the more sacrificial blood. They try to recreate calvary they try to recreate the blood of christ so everything is about the blood that's why they don't like about the blood that's why they don't sing about the blood no more y'all don't hear me that's why they got gospel singers right now they're not even anointed yet oh i'm, I'm, I'm going here <sighs> man i don't care how many awards you win I don't care what you do and what they say. If you're singing and you're preaching and you're teaching can't break no thing, you have no anointing. Stop that. You're just, a, you, you're just a puppet like everybody else. Yeah, I said it. And ain't nobody jealous. I just had to say what I had to say because it's the truth. All right, so let me tell you what a warlock is. A warlock is a person, usually a man, who uses magic, especially against others, compare word and because forms without heart and are consistent with the old English in mythology and they are a traitor it says a traitor so let me tell you something when i was talking about plants they send in a man even family people hungry no let me say something people greedy for money they will sell you out they have all the money so all i gotta do is offer them hey you know i, I need you to just, just just hang with them just tell me what they're doing just tell me what their plans just get to know them befriend them um for men some i want you to make love to her for a woman i i i, I mean vice versa i want you to make love to him y'all don't hear what i'm saying that's an assignment let me tell you something we all have assignments there are some warlocks and witches assigned to kill you you sitting up there playing them games they not that's why people are dying people are dying without god and that's why god was like deanna i really need 
need you to do this study on witches and warlocks. Y'all need to understand. But here's the deal. You can't even detect them if you're tainted. How can you be tainted? Let me tell you something. Through the food, through the drink. You have to watch who prepares your food and your drink. Don't eat from anybody. I will not eat from anybody. And I'm going to tell you right now. How I know I'll start getting sick, you guys. And, and I, I don't want to sound gross, but I have to tell you things because you need to know this. How you know that you, that something's wrong, you'll start spitting up. You'll be like, what the heck? I don't have a cold or anything. That's because your body is rejecting. Come on, everything's a spirit. Okay, walk with me. So let's go to the 16 types of witches. So like I said, there's thousands of warlocks, so there is no number on that. But there are 16 types of witches, okay? So this ain't your, this ain't your Samantha used to wiggle her nose, witch, okay? This ain't the craft, y'all remember that? And that ain't that girl, what that, what that girl, Sabrina? This ain't that kind of witch. These are real witches. All right, so I'm going to read them off to you. The first one is your traditional witch. Now, these witches who have a base in history of witchcraft, of the old craft that before it became Wicca, these are from generation. Now, everything is generational. Everything is generational. I want you to know that. And they often study their ancestors or other folklore attached to witchcraft. Traditional witches want to honor the old ways of practicing their craft, so they are the most dangerous ones. And they will often focus on working with the local history and spirits of where they are and where they come from. Like Louisiana have a different types of witches. California have different types of witches. I'm in Georgia. Oh, this is a whole different level. I mean, these remind me of the ones, point blank, the whole, um, they call it the Bible Belt. The, the southern states, they're the strongest witches because guess what? It's called the Bible Belt. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me continue about the traditional witch. While these witches, they do old history and customs in high regard, they are absolutely contemporary traditional witches practicing today. So don't be fooled. And then, I don't know if y'all understand, a lot of them are pulling people from the church because, you see, I don't think y'all understand what is happening and what has happened. Right now, the church is in judgment. Remember, the scripture says that judgment must begin in the house of God. That's why you're seeing so much disarray. It's not, because let me tell you something, God's church ain't going to never fall down. You can just forget that. This is his world, and he is still God. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, Pharaoh, I made you for this day. Can I tell you something? He made the devil whole. Oh, that's why he's going in the pit. So it doesn't matter. You have to understand that God is still in control. But God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge and wisdom. I'm trying to give you some wisdom. You need to know your enemy. A lot of you, let me tell you something what's wrong with the church too. They're not teaching about spirits. They're not talking about spiritual warfare. And it ain't and ain't your brother and your sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't going to lie. Some of y'all just, you, you know, you know. But that's flesh. I'm talking about spirits. You have one enemy and that's the devil. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the second witch. It's called a garnering, well, I'm sorry, garnering witch, which is a wicca. She's a practice that came about in the 1950s, and because of General Gardner, so they actually called it after him. Now think about it, because he was a warlock. Y'all understand what's happening here? Often considered to be the father of Wicker, his name is Gerald Gardner. Now he spread across the world. Those who practice Gardner and Wicker have strong ties to nature, challenge um, society. Um, they have many rituals, a lot of rituals. Can I tell you something? Witchcraft cannot be performed. I mean, witchcraft cannot live without rituals. And that's why so many people are dying, and, and, and they have to be sacrificed. And the more power, the more wealth they want, the more people are sacrificed. Y'all do understand what's happening here, right? Okay. And now, you must be initiated to be in this type of witch. So that means that probably a legacy, a um, genealogy or something like that, or maybe just... You know, their mother, this mother. As a matter of fact, can I tell y'all um, what happened here right quick? I went into a store, and it was three generations of witches. And I was with two sisters, and I'm not kidding. So immediately when the youngest witch, it was the grandmother, it was the mother, and it was the youngest witch. When the youngest one, I was actually, but I, my spirit, so I just turned around. And she, I never get, she just... Cause she knew, and she was powerful. But I looked at her house like, you don't want me. You don't want me. And I'm not playing. And so she tried to come behind. Ain't no try. She tried to touch my friend. So I pulled my friend. I said, you better stop. I'm serious. Because, yes, y'all know. Y'all know my, you should know. Yes, I'm that person. And so I saw the play. And so then the grandmother took a basket. And she kept trying to touch me. I said, I said Lord, you know, I know this old lady old, but I don't play. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in that store, it was something. I'm just going to be real with you. I got loud. I took out my bottle of oil. 
Cause I keep, I keep it, I keep my spray. I stay strapped. Say what you want to say. I put it on the floor, and I said, "Let's go." Oh yes, I, I made a ruckus up in there. Oh yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I ain't scared. You see, if you really gonna be with spiritual warfare and do what God say, you can't be scared. That's rule one. Cause some of y'all just scared. All right, so that's the garden witch, okay? And she's incredibly structured. And fasting as a witch would practice, and she grow and learn more about her craft. So this is a serious witch, okay? All right, then you have the Alexandrian witch, founded in the 60s by Alex and Maxine Sanders, all right? Alexandra Wicca is a British derived of Wicca and witchcraft. Alexandra Wicca has a lot of similarities to the garden witch, the one I just told you about. Elements of ceremonial magic, quabla as well. Alexandra is seen as more eccentric and less structured than the garden witch, but they follow if it works, use it, which is still must be initiated in order to practice this level. Now, this level have degrees and levels of advancement that can be achieved as a witch move along in their practice. Their covenants meet on new moons, full moons, and Sabbath days. So they practice the same things that we do. That's why, I like, a lot of people don't understand. They use R. Y'all do know they use an R, right? Y'all do know they use all the stuff we use. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Crosses, everything. All right. The fourth one is a Corellian witch. Now, this is a novelist tradition or Korean witch that was founded in the late 20s by Caroline High Coral. She claimed to come from a line of witches. And also, now this is this going to be deep. This is where you have to watch this type of witch because this is also a psychic. All right, they're psychic. They call themselves spiritual healers. And guess what? Herbalists. So you have to watch about that. You have to watch. And they're heavily influenced by their lineage. All right, now she was the head of a church. <laughs> Can you believe this? Her name is Carolyn High Coral. She was the head of a church. I'm trying to tell y'all. Oh, y'all going to understand one day. And she was also highly recognized until her death in the 1940s. Now, she was recognized even as a Wicca into the 1990s. Now, that's just right there. And was seen as more universal. Coraline Wicca is one of the most, oh my God, they say widespread practices and is still in existence of today. But we already know that part. All right. Now, the fifth witch is, I hope you're writing these down if you can, but also, you know, I do a lot of um, studies, right? All you got to do is just. Look at up, 16 types of witches. You need to know this stuff. I know you don't think so, but yes, you do. Number five, sea witch. A sea witch has strong ties to water and the ocean and uses element often in her practice. Sea and ocean magic will often use sand, shells, driftwood, or other elements that come from a place. Sea witches feel connected to water and ancient folklore involving sirens. Uh, etc. Now y'all gonna trip out on this and I love Sade too. But y'all notice that Sade, most of her music was done around water. Y'all don't notice that, huh? Uh, um, even the other lady, they, they call Queen B. You remember she did Lemonade Around Water? As a matter of fact, in Louisiana on a campus. Y'all ain't read it for me. Alright, so that's the fifth witch. Alright, the sixth witch is called a kitchen witch. Now this is your more common witch. These are the ones that try to be on a low low. But you can, you, you can, you can listen to it. Also known sometimes as a hearth witch or a home witch. Now, what they do is they create most of their magic in the home, which I actually um, liken her to a Jezebel spirit. Listen to this. Or in the kitchen. They are very home-based. You know them little home ones that don't ever do nothing? Don't, yeah, yeah, whatever. And so um, they're incredibly nurturing. Incredibly. I mean, they want to nurture, feed you, and love to make their home a truly special and sacred place. Um, kitchen witches love to cook and brew and use herbs. And um, they always, you, you know, like, they always invite people over. They, they want to entertain a lot. You have to be careful of people like that. I'm sorry. I'm just being real. Sometimes gather from their own garden. When practicing, they combine their own personal, individual, magical energy. And sometimes they use oral, herbs, food, everyday objects to create their spells, rituals, and magic. All right, let's move to the seventh witch. It's called a hedge witch. A head witch practice what is known as hedge jumping, which is venturing out into the world and to other worlds. You know, you can travel in between worlds. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I mean, we, we're not going to get on that subject, but even prophets can do it. You got to understand that we are spiritual first. That's why God says, before I formed you, I knew you. Oh, come on, somebody. The spirit world is more real than the natural. But y'all ain't ready for me. All right, so the hedge witch, this is what she do. She uses herbs and astral projection. That's what I want to tell you. 
People of God, I'm talking about for the ones that have sight. And hold on, you don't have to be a prophet just to have sight. When you truly love God and you are conversing with God and you're in your Bible and you're fasting and you pray, you'll see things that everybody else can't see. Astral projection is real. Have you ever been in your home? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And you saw somebody, you'd be like, wait a minute. Or you was out and you thought you saw by somebody in the car. And you're like, I know I saw somebody. You did. Y'all ain't ready for me. You did. You did. You, you know what you saw. But it's called astral projection. They're not really there, but they're projecting their spirit there. Come on, somebody. And their whole, the whole flesh. So this has witch. She can send messages between both worlds. Now, she's very powerful. And she practiced extra projection as well and worked with herbs and earth-based magic. Now, you know, in Hollywood, they talk about Mother Earth. So she's one of them, okay? But also, she is she has the ability to cross between the world and the spirit of very. And believe it or not, this one actually flies on a broom. Isn't it something how folklore and tales are some kind of real? This one actually flies on a bro on broom. Ain't that a trip? All right, and legend was a misunderstanding based on witches flying in the spiritual realm. So that's where they get the broom thing because they actually did fly in the spiritual realm. All right, so let's go to number eight. It's called a Dianic witch. Practice the most feminist of all witchcraft. Followers of a cult of Diana, all women and no men allowed. This is the feminism. Now y'all understand what's, what's happening in the world today. So this is the witch that's taking over the feminine movie. Look, come on, somebody. And what happened is they, they worship through goddesses and they have three aspects. Their maiden, their mother, and their crones. And they have rich, rituals and worships can vary. But everything must be from a feminist standpoint. Y'all understand what's happening? Praise God. All right, now let's go to the ninth witch. Elemental witch. Now they practice four elements: earth, air, wind, and fire. Does all this stuff starting to line up to you? Earth, wind, and fire. You remember them? You, come on, y'all. This honestly, to study like this, it'll take about two weeks to really break that thing down for y'all. Because I'm telling you, it'll blow your mind. I know we loved our music back in the five, fifty, sixty, seventy, and eighties, but y'all, most of them are channelers. They they channel. Let me ask you something. The influence. Where are you influenced? They call it inspiration music now. Who inspired the music? Where did it come from? Y'all ain't read it from me. Come on, somebody. All right, so let me continue about the elemental witch. An uh, elemental witch may have an altar for each specific element. So they have four different altars. Elemental witches are called the elements of casting spell, performing rituals, and may even have an element they are personally identified with. That means almost like a chameleon. They can turn into that element, air, water. Isn't that crazy? But remember, we in spiritual first. All right, the tenth witch is the ceremonial witch, and they have many practices. But ceremonies and um, witches, they practice and they hold it, especially in high regard. Now, their magic is one of the most powerful ones. They likely work a ritual, or, a ritual or ceremony into whatever they're casting or trying to accomplish. Ceremonial witch. Now, y'all going to trip out? I'm sorry. This is what they did for the Nipsey Hussle funeral. You can say what you want to say. Also, they do for the um the big um the games at halftime. Y'all notice there's rituals uh, for the Grammys. Y'all don't understand. Everything is ritual, but they call it ceremonial witch. So, it has to be a certain person that they put over it. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And so, they are often called at a specific time for a specific place, whatever they're casting. So when they're doing those rituals and those ceremonial things, they're actually casting spells. So some of you that I hope, I hope you don't go there in person and through the TV, you got to understand even through this, everything's a spirit. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot stress that enough. Please, please, brothers and sisters, be careful what you take in your spirit. I'm not saying be afraid of nothing because, no, we are not given a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind before God. But you got to use wisdom because some of y'all just listen to anything and anybody. Come on now. All right. Number 11 is a green witch, also called a garden witch. A forest witch. Now, they are highly connected to the earth and the energy that it possesses. They may have their own garden where they grow their own herbs, but they also study in the area and practice of local plants and environment. To know about it. Think about it. Green witches use plants and greenery in their spells and magic, and sometimes even in their cooking in their home. Green witches are very natural. They love to be in the nature. So you understand, <laughs> dollar. I mean, you. Ha I hope you're listening. And honestly, I hope y'all do go back and Google and read this stuff for yourself. It's called the sixteen types of witches. 
you can do it yourself. All I, I, I just, I do intense. I mean, I got so much paperwork and stuff on the bed. Y'all be thinking like, what's going on with this woman? I got to know who my enemy is. That's what's wrong. All right. So green, which anything green, plants, trees, flowers, and they are close to mother earth. There it goes again. Most people in Hollywood, they worship mother earth. I told y'all what happened to me when I was in Hollywood, how they used this actor, a famous actor. I'm not kidding. And me and her became friends. And she asked me, she said, Deanna, are you ready? And she said, okay, I need you to do something. She said, I need you to take your tailbone and connect with the earth. And I started tripping. I started tripping. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We're no longer friends, of course. I started, I said, oh, no, I don't know what you're asking me. I knew, but I, I wasn't ready to sell my soul. Come on, somebody. I, I'm telling you, it's real. And so she can pass this as possible. So she's very strong, the green witch. Hereditary witch. Now, this is what I was talking about, the lineage of the three witches I saw in that store. There's a witch that was born into witchcraft. Can I tell you something? There are so many people that were born into witchcraft. I'm about to say something. I knew it. I knew it. You know, so, sometimes when you're doing stuff, you know God to say something, but you don't know if he's going to make you say it. But I have to say it because I have to be obedient. On my dad's side, when I was a little girl, I saw so much stuff. And then one of my aunts had actually told me she was a witch. So I'm like, you got power, but I got power too. I was like, this is crazy. I saw it when I was a little girl. I I remember one of them feeding my dad something, just to be honest with you. And I remember that day. I have to be honest. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I was a little girl. And it was some eggs. And they had veins on them. And dad was just eating it. And I said, dad, don't eat that. Right? Because I, I'm a little girl. I didn't know. But... I guess God was always with me. And then she tried to give it to me. I hit it out of hand. I ran home and told mama. I've never forgotten that. I've never forgotten it. So it doesn't matter what family it is. Truth is truth. And some of you, if you real, really be real with yourself, you can saw some stuff too that make you want to. Our grandparents, parents, some of them did some stuff. Y'all can say what y'all want to say. Truth is truth all day long. Let me continue. The hereditary rich, they practice their magic and it's passed down from the previous generation. And it is in their family and their lineage. Though they may work with their own individual practices, they are still working as a family. All right, the Kardashians. You all starting to understand some of this stuff? Do you understand why everybody they mess with just go crazy or something? Um, they also are very well recognized in, in their families. However, there's still a choice. Now, hereditary witches must be born into witchcraft, so it is a, gener a generation thing. But if you do not choose to practice witchcraft, you won't still be a hereditary witch. But um, but let me tell you something. They make you. They make you. Oh, yes. Unless you're just crazy like me and be like, I ain't doing it. <laughs> I don't care about what nothing y'all say. All right, 13. It's called a cosmic witch. Cosmic witches are contemporary witches who look to the cosmos, astrology, that's why you're not supposed to do horoscopes. But some of you will be like, oh, what's my horoscope? Man, that's all witchcraft. Just wait on God. If you want the future, wait on God. Wait on God. But some of y'all can't. All right, so these are called star witches as well. These witches often follow the planets and the alignment of the stars and base their spells and rituals on different placements. Believe it or not, excuse me, most cosmic witches. Now, this is other uh, stuff I've done. Um, research. Cosmic witches and warlocks, they work for NASA. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying, huh? All right, you will. You will understand one day. Secular witch. Isn't that crazy? There's a secular witch. Secular witches still cast spells, use crystal, herbs, orals, candles, but they don't attach spirituality to their practice. Secular witches don't worship a deity or a high being. Their practice is entirely non-religious. They don't believe in the power behind energy or that energy is in their work. This isn't to say that a secular witch can't be spiritual. It's simply to say their work is not. So they are two separate. So actually, they're casting these spells and everything but they don't really think it's a religion they just do it because this is what they've been taught to do they call secular witches okay praise god the 15th one is a solitary witch now this can be any type of witch but they choose to practice alone rather than with a coven these can be dangerous because they this is how people summon themselves i mean summon the spirits of the darkness and cut themselves y'all know and nothing Bullying spirits. Y'all do know. Oh, I got to say this. Now, this is research and also with God revelation. Have y'all noticed the height in suicides of our children and bullying? 
and suicide. Those are spells and rituals they do in the room. They have they they covering thing on and they just y'all don't understand. They have a globe and they put their hand on the globe. This is revelation from thus said the Lord, and they pray, they pray over the world. And I'm not kidding. It's a spirit. And if these kids are not guarded by you, the parent, then they hear, kill yourself. Suicide. They're not going to love you. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. This stuff's so real to make your head spin. Exactly. Let me tell you something. Don't you hear it? Don't you hear two voices? You can play yourself if you want to. When you are especially into God, there is a voice that tries to come against the spirit of God. God will tell you, don't do that, don't say that, don't go here. But there's a spirit that tell you to do it. And if you listen to that spirit, then you too will be under its influence. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. All right, and the last witch, believe it or not, is electric witch. Isn't that something? Electric witch. And you already know. Now, don't we have an electric company? Well, y'all gonna y'all gonna piece this stuff together. I just know some of you will. An electric witch does not have one set religion, practice, or tradition or culture. They pull from many sources. Ultimately becomes the witch's own. They worship a high being, and you already know it's Satan, and they practice secular and they have their own kind of spirit and it calls the electric witch. They run all the electronic world. Now y'all understand computer witches. Y'all understand why computer glitches. Y'all understand why the, I mean, they're all trying to get like, how can I say it? Have you ever felt electricity in your body? You know how you say, Ooh, I, I feel, a, uh, I, I got, you, you shock me. That just doesn't happen. Your body actually has a form of DNA electric, believe it or not, molecules. We aren't going to get all into that. But let me tell you something. Everything tie in. There are spirits that are working against you and they're not playing. The Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And not necessarily in that order. Praise God. So these are the 16 witches. And like I said, you can Google them yourself. Um, God was telling me the reason why, and I've been on this subject for quite a while about witches and warlocks. Every day, it's getting harder and harder. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying when I say harder and harder for the ones that are not saved. And that's because they don't believe. They don't believe in God and they don't believe in Satan. So now they can be attacked because just because you don't believe don't mean that you can't be attacked. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what Satan is trying to do. Satan knows he has but a short time. So his mission is to take as many of us to hell with him as he can. And the devil is a liar. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost because God said, nay, I have people that I will strip from his hand. I have people that I will save, but by my servants. So what is God saying? In this hour, it's time for the remnant to rise. Don't be getting scared, and you got to man your post. What what you what I mean, man your post? You got to study. You got to fast. You got to pray. You got to move when God say move. You got to open your mouth when God say open your mouth and quit being scared of these people. Some of you are scary. Too scary. Talking about you a warrior. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, they're killing people left and right. And it's the church's fault because the church is just sitting by or trying to get money or trying to get famous or, or trying to, uh, or, you know, everybody want to be, everybody want to be a star. That's only one. That's only one. And he don't even consider himself a star. The Bible says that he made himself of no reputation. So why are we? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, and yes, yes, Nicole, time is winding. I, I don't know God, you know, nobody knows, but I can feel it. I can feel it. I'm telling you guys, I can feel it. And that's why I'm trying my best to be a better person, a better servant, a better everything. God, just and, and every day, because we're not perfect. God, keep me. You got to gird yourself. Can I tell y'all something? Evil is rising. This is his time. Read Revelation. This is his time, you guys. So it cannot be stopped. Oh, well, God's going to. No, 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 no. Save yourself. Listen to what I mean by that. Do what you're supposed to do. Fast. Pray. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray. Fast. Read your word. Gird yourself. That's what I mean by saving yourself. Gird yourself. Wear the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, oh, come on, somebody. I got to go here. I got to go here. I don't know why I got to read it. Hold on, y'all. Bear with me. Bear with me. I'm almost finished. I know I took a long time. Because y'all know prophets just can't just say one thing. We got to. God will put something else in our spirit. Or Ephesians 6. Y'all know where I'm going. Ephesians 6. Okay, yeah. Arm of God. I got to read it. I don't know why. I just got to be obedient. And then I'm out of here. And then y'all could, you know, go have the rest of your day. But I'll probably get on here again. 
Because that's how God been rolling with me. Okay. All right. Ephesians 6 through 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Let me read that for you guys. Okay. Ephesians 6 through 11. Actually, Ephesians 6, 11, 13 says, let's start with 11, okay? It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. 12, for we wrestle not, I really want you to get this one, please. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, flesh and blood, come on somebody, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers. Which are, who who y'all think is the rule? The ones that rule the world, rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. He says high places. Hello. 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may able to be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. 14. Stand therefore having your lions girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Excuse me. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Did you hear what God said in number 16? Above Above all, taking the shield of faith. People, he's after your faith. He's after your faith. Because faith is with confidence. And if he steal your confidence, he steal your faith. Hallelujah to his name. You know how I many people try to steal my, you ain't no apostle. You ain't this. You ain't. And I mean, at first, when I first started, it was getting to me. And that's why I did me a vision bowl and I put, I said, I am who I am. I am who God have called me to be. Come on, somebody. You got to encourage yourself, David, because I feel some of you, sometimes it gets it gets hard. You got to encourage yourself. Hallelujah to his name. I feel the power of God. He says in 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Can I tell you something? That's how Jesus beat the devil. He used the word. He didn't use his opinion. He didn't get scared. He used the word of God. Some of you are not using the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And 18, praying always with the prayer, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Can I tell you something? The most powerful prayer is in the spirit. Now, hold on. I know all of you don't speak in tongues. So I am not going to be that type of person say that if you don't speak in tongues, you can't touch God. That's a lie before God because God knows your spirit. But I will tell you this. If you want to ask for the gift of tongues, it is the most powerful. Oh, yes, it is. And watching there unto, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Can I tell you something right now? For my spirit, I start speaking in tongues and hold on. Let me tell you, the fake tongues, everybody sound alike. That's not God. Your tongue may not sound like another. But I'm telling you, if you really want to win this war, you got to ask God for the gift of tongues. I'm telling you, there's something that comes inside of you when you start speaking in tongues. And it is a supernatural. And it's from the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And that your enemy must go down. You don't hear me because it's not even you praying. It is the utterance of the Holy Ghost. You don't hear what I'm saying. And the last but not least, before I get on here, the most powerful position of prayer is on your face, on the floor. Get your blanket down there and get on that floor. Let me tell you why. The devil thinks to be God, so he ain't going to bow down because he thinks he God. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But when you on that floor and you on that floor and you praying, I don't care if you have tears in your eyes, I promise you, you coming up with some power and victory. Hallelujah to his name. Nobody playing. All right. So God bless you. God keep you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. We are soldiers of Jesus the Christ. Come on somebody. Act like it, walk like it, talk like it, be like it. In Jesus name. We're a lot of soldiers for that is who you are.